Hello again, my name is Roland, I'm with Delmi Solutions and Delmi Training Institute. Well in today's video, I'm going to be talking about coaxial cables, but more specifically I'm going to be talking about the LMR series types of cables. And I'm going to be walking you through how to terminate your own cables. So right here as you can see, I have two types of coaxial cables. I have the regular RG6 coaxial cable which has the BNC connectors and also I have the LMR400 which has the, the male and type connectors. In previous videos I spoke about how to terminate your own RG6 coaxial cable using different types of connectors. Well the LMR400 it's a coaxial cable that has very low loss. Depending on whatever solution that you're working with would determine the type of coaxial cable that you need to use. To get started, I'm gonna need my LMR 400 coaxial cable and I'm also going to be terminating on one end of the cable the male type of the connector. So with this, once you look through, you can see there's a pin and that designates this connector as a male type connector. This one has a little hole in the center, so that's why it's the female type. Well, once you, you purchase these connectors, they come in a set of packaging like this. And each and every one of the packaging that you buy comes with the connector, it comes with the crimp ferrule that goes over it, and it comes with one of these heat shrink wraps as part of the package. To get started, I'm gonna be using the tools from Times Microwave Systems and with this tool bag I have one of these cutters I also have a crimper and then finally I have this tool it helps me to strip it, chamfer the edges and prep the cable for termination. Last but not the least I'm gonna need a heat gun and that is what I'm gonna use to shrink wrap on the cable. Well, so now that you know the tools that I'm gonna to be using for, for this video, I'm gonna use this tool to cut a little piece off the cable. I'm gonna put this on, let it stick out a little bit. Just apply a little bit of pressure on this and rotate it around the cable right as you rotate it around the cable you let the cutting tool do its own thing and it's very important about when you're cutting this side so that's what you don't want to hold this on the cable and try and squeeze it like that to cut when you do that you end up crushing the cable like that you notice that there's a difference in the cable diameter from when I crashed it and when I spun it around um, to cut it clean. So this tool is very simple for you to use. So as you can see from here, it indicates clearly that cut number one, and that's what we're gonna be doing. So the first cut is gonna be here, and then when I flip this on the opposite side, it says cut number two. Before I get started with this tool, I have to push this in, in order to make sure that my cable can sit in properly. So having cut my cable, I want to make sure that it's cut flush. And before I proceed, there are a few things that are very important that I have to do. I have to grab my heat shrink jacket and slide it over the cable. The next thing is you want to grab the crimp ferrule that comes with it and slide it also over. So these are the first two things you have to do. So now having pushed, depressed this all the way in, I'm able to insert the cable into like that till it hits the end. And then once it hits the end, I'm going to depress on this button that comes with it and that's what's going to give me my first cut. So once I press that down, I'm going to spin it around the cable that I have like that. And what this does is, let me take it off so you can see, I'm just going to push this out. 
So it gives me my first cut, as you can see around this. So that is the first cut that cut number one does to the cable. So now that I have pressed this and I rotated it around with my thumb still depressed on it, I'm going to hold it and pull it apart like that. Just And what this does is it's going to expose the center core of this LMR400 cable. Once that happens, I'd have to um, chamfer the edges a little bit in order to make sure that it's able to make contact properly. So again, with this tool, you notice that it's got a little bit of a chamfer on this side. So that's what I'm going to use to chamfer the cable. So now I take this and I put the cable in there with the center core. And then all I have to do is take this off. You notice that it has chamfered the edges of the center core. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to cut number two and push it all the way here. So once I push it in, all I'm going to do is I'm going to start to rotate this along the cable. And you notice what is happening? It, is, it begins to strip the jacket off the cable, exposing only the braiding that is there and you notice that it only took off the jacket of the cable so this is the jacket that was taken off the cable and now I am left with the braiding all right so once I have done this the next step is to lift the braiding off from this cable to make sure that I don't have any contact between this outer braiding and my center core. If any of these should touch, then my cable is gonna have a shot and I could have problems. Now, when you look at the barrel on my female, you notice that it's a shorter barrel and the male has a longer barrel. So that's one of the differences that you would notice with these two types of connectors. So now that I have folded all these ones back this way, I am going to grab my male connector and slide it on like that. Just keep sliding it till it stops. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my metal ring onto it. So always make sure that the connector is firmly attached to the cable like that. And then you open that and slide it onto the cable and then you slide it onto that metal barrel. You're gonna go ahead and gently squeeze that like that. And then it makes contact, making a firm connection. So having done this now, the last stage for this would be to slide your heat shrink onto the terminated cable and then you're going to use your heat gun to try and shrink this till it gives it a perfect seal to hold it in place properly so now with my heat gun and i'm going to turn it on too hard then i'm going to start applying it all around and you notice that it's going to start shrinking, right? While you're doing that, you're rotating it a little bit. And then it shrinks and holds everything in place. Right. So that is how you terminate your LMR400 male connector. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the opposite end of my cable using the female type connector. And with this one, like I said, it has a short barrel. The process is going to be exactly the same.
I'm going to take my female connector and I'm going to push it on. You notice it snags on, so I just slide it and twist it till it gets to the end. So now what I just do is I slide my crimp ferrule all the way onto it. And you notice that you don't have to trim any of the, the excess braiding that is on it because it seals it all the way. Right, so now you notice that my crimp ferrule is pushed all the way. So now using my crimp tool that comes with it, I'm going to slide this on to the cable. And just like I did for the first uh, male connector, right, I gently crimp that on. And you only crimp it once, you don't rip crimp, because once you do that, you end up damaging the connector. So now you can see that I have a nice crimp onto this and holds the connector in place. So the connector is not going to fall off. Right. So the final stage is to have my shrink, my heat shrink pulled all the way on it. Now that has an And if you'd want to be notified of future videos, please make sure to turn on your notification. If there are any questions or comments that you'd want us to know, we'd love to hear from you. Please leave them in the comment section below. My name is Roland. I'm with Delmi Solutions and Delmi Training Institute. Thank you for watching and be safe.